So I wrote an article on Giz China asking Xiaomi to stop using Snapdragon 625 in their cell phones, and they did. You know, the new Redmi Note 5 Pro uses the Snapdragon 636, the Mi Note 3 uses the Snapdragon 660, but it looks like Nubia is starting to use Snapdragon 625s in all their phones. So it looks like I'm gonna have to write ZTE an article to tell them to stop using Snapdragon 625s. But in the meantime, let me introduce you to the Nubia N3. So I do a different phone giveaway on my channel every month. So I recommend you check the description down below for a giveaway link and enter. It takes five seconds and it's free. All right, so I don't want to call the Nubia N3 a boring phone, but to be honest, it's not that exciting, specs-wise at least. That being said, that line of thinking is a little bit unfair, and I do recognize that, because the specs are pretty much the exact same as the Redmi 5 Plus, the Nubia M2, as well as the Lenovo P2. And let's go through the specs really quickly. It has the Snapdragon 625 processor. It has a 6-inch 2048 by 1080 p IPS LCD. It's got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of ROM. It's got Android 7.1 with Nubius UI on top. I'm not sure if Nubius UI has an official name like MIUI or EMUI. Let me know in the comments down below because I don't think they do. And it also has dual rear cameras, a 16 megapixel and an eight megapixel rear camera and a 16 megapixel front camera with PDAF as well. And finally, it has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is quite sizable. Talk quickly about the build quality in the Nubia M2. The Nubia M2 is going to be made fully out of metal. And to be honest, I've always been a fan of how Nubia phones look, especially their color scheme. So if you look at this picture over here, it really looks like the um, obsidian color scheme for the phone looks really good. It's, it's obsidian metal with gold trim as well as red borders around the camera. I think that's a very good combination and it looks really, really good. I mean, if you compare that to the Redmi 5 Plus, the Redmi 5 Plus does not look as... What's the right word? I mean, sleek would be a pretty good word to describe that. It's not as sleek as the uh, Nubia M3. Um, it really doesn't look as good. It's good, like it feels good, and it looks fairly okay, but it's not a beautiful smartphone, beautiful design, just like the Nubia M3. Now, there are two problems with this phone. If you look at these leaked pictures, the Nubia M3 has massive bezels around the side of the phone. Take a look at my Elephone U Pro. The Elephone U Pro here has um, very tiny bezels on the side, and the Nubia M3 has massive bezels on the side, and the top and the bottom bezels on the Nubia M3 are also massive as well. To be honest, they actually look bigger than what you have on the Redmi 5 Plus, which is a big of a downside. Um, the other thing as well is that the Nubia M3 has micro USB instead of USB-C, and I don't know what's up with Nubia, but they seem to be including um, micro USB on a few of their new phones, and I'm not sure what's up with that. They really should move to USB-C. Really not much to talk about the display for the Nubia M3, except that it's not AMOLED, so there can be a um, underscreen fingerprint sensor, but they have chosen not to do that. The fingerprint sensor is on the back. And also, if you talk about the battery life, you get a 5,000 mAh battery with the Snapdragon 625, same as the Xiaomi Mi Max 2, um, as well as the Lenovo P2. Those things got like 22 to 24 hours of video playback straight, and I'm sure this thing can do it as well. It's really no problem for such a big battery and a Snapdragon 625 as well. So the phone here is going to come with Android 7.1 Nougat and not Android 8.0 Oreo. Uh, looks like um, Nubia is a little bit behind the curve with when it comes to releasing phones with up-to-date software. To be honest, I don't care that much. If you have Android 7.1 on a phone, really doesn't affect me that much. As long as you fix all the bugs and everything that is non-functional, you make it functional. So there are a lot of reviewers who want the latest and greatest OS, and I completely understand their reasoning for that. But for me personally, I really don't care. You give me some rock solid, you know, one generation old software, that's good enough for me. Now, Nubia skin is pretty light. It's not as heavy as what you have on MIUI. I think it's more in line with Huawei's EMUI or ColorOS. Actually, you know what? That's not true. ColorOS is a little bit heavier and a lot buggier as well. Um, so those of you who want stock Android, this might not be the phone for you, but to be honest, it's, it should be okay. Um, Nubia's OS usually isn't too intrusive on those of us who want a nice, clean stock experience. And in terms of optimization and speed, it should be similar to Xiaomi's MIUI, very well optimized, um, quite fast, and pretty much the bottleneck is the hardware and not the software. And finally, last thing, the camera with the dual rear cameras and the 16 megapixel front camera. Nubia has had a pretty good track record of making sure their cameras are pretty good and making sure that the software side of the cameras don't hold back the hardware side of the cameras. So I really don't have any complaints or any misgivings about how good the camera's gonna be. It's gonna be pretty good. Now, most importantly is the price. Nubia has traditionally been a little bit more expensive than Xiaomi. Xiaomi's always the budget, the best value option, 
and that is something I like. But some people will pay more for Nubia or even Oppo, but Nubia is not as expensive as Oppo. Um, you know, recently um, Nubia just released their Nubia M2, which has the exact same specs as this, except it's not 18 by nine. It's a regular 16 by nine phone with really big top and bottom bezels, same as the Redmi Note 4. Um, that was on sale for about $200, but it's frequently on sale for about 160 bucks. So between the Nubia uh, M2, as well as the Redmi Note 4, those were just 160 bucks Snapdragon 625 phones. So they competed with each other. That was actually a pretty good price. However, I don't know how much the Nubia M3 is going to cost. I suspect it's going to cost a lot. I suspect it's going to cost around 250 bucks since it's 18 by nine and it's not like the Nubia N2. So you do pay a little bit more. And if they price it too close to the Nubia M2, they're going to cannibalize the M2 in favor of, of the N3 sale. So I really don't think that is something um, ZTE wants to do with their cell phones. Anyway, I want to know what your thoughts are on the potential price of the Nubia um, N3. Do you think it's gonna be 250 bucks? I think so, and I would hope it's lower, but I really think that 250 is the correct price that it's gonna be released at. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Actually, let me know what price you want to pay for a Nubia phone with the same specs as a Redmi 5 Plus. And don't forget to check the description down below for a link to a giveaway and enter. It takes five seconds and it's free, and I have a new one every month as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.